I'm here in the organic village on day two of ploughing 2022 and I'm at the Sealac stand with founder of the company Martin Dempsey. Martin, thanks for joining me. You're welcome, Megan. So listen, Sealac focuses on the power of seaweed and I suppose it can be beneficial as a feed additive. And I know you do products for humans as well as animals, but I suppose focusing more on the livestock side of the business, how can these seaweed products be beneficial as a food additive or a diet additive for livestock? Well, what we find with the, with the seaweed is that if we can get the seaweed into the animal from a very young age and get the gut, uh, the bacteria in the gut um, uh, working, yeah. then the animal has a great start and uh, the need for antibiotics is, is vastly reduced. Okay, well that's really interesting because I suppose in cattle and sheep and, and pigs and so on, gut health is really, really important. Absolutely. It's huge, yeah. yeah. Um, and I suppose to come to that piece you said there, really interesting about the antibiotic use. Yes. That's huge and like, I mean, there's going to be legislation coming in in terms of uh, preventing mm -hmm. antimicrobial resistance and kind of putting a halt to blanket treatments and stuff yes. like that. So yeah. I'm sure people will be on the lookout for, for yeah. mechanisms to try and reduce the need for antibiotics. Yeah. So. How, how exactly does that work? Do you do you put this in water? Do mm -hmm. you put it in meal? Tell me a little bit about how it's fed to the animal. Well, like, well, like you say, prevention is definitely better uh, than cure, and antibiotics really are something we want to get away from as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So the products we have here, we start off with the electrolyte here, uh, which is a mix of electrolyte and seaweed powder, okay. which, which I recommend you would give to, to the calf straight with the colostrum at birth. So wow. you'd have the electrolyte to give it energy, and you'd have the seaweed to stimulate the bacteria in the gut to get the bacteria working. So once once they've got the electrolyte, then we have a powder then for calves that we mix in in with milk replacer. Okay. So okay. very fine powder. So they stay on that for three to four weeks or five weeks as long as they're on the milk replacer. Okay. And as they move on to the crunch, then we have a flake here. Okay, uh, I can see that the grain is a little bit coarser there. Yes, this this is the powder. It kind of mixes in with the with the milk replacer. Okay. This, this is coarser as they grow older. Okay. Uh, you just sprinkle that on the crunch. Okay. Uh, and then you just keep them on that, um, you know, all the time. It's, it's all about keeping the balance okay. right, not, not, not letting the animals get deficient in anything at all. Okay, and so you're starting right from birth, actually, because That's you hear, the, yeah. I suppose, a lot yeah. about colostrum and how yes. vitamin-rich that is, and it's, it's so full of antibodies and everything like that, but this is, this is enhancing the, that again. Absolutely. The start is everything. Okay. You know, no matter what the animal, lamb, sheep, piglet, the start is the most important thing and if you okay. get the start right you've got every chance that those animals will thrive and hit their targets you know it's when they hit a setback or, or when they get um, an infection or something like that uh, that's when the trouble starts so we, we want to try and avoid all that and the seaweed really seems to have these kind of antimicrobial properties uh, okay. present in it so it's, it's, it's a really really good natural product. Okay, and I suppose going back to the beginning then of where the seaweed comes from, I think it's harvested between the mid and intertidal areas yes. and it's the Atlantic Ocean you're yes. sourcing from. Yeah. Is there, I suppose, is there any kind of concerns there around um, maybe disturbance of a natural habitat or is this actually sustainable to, to cultivate? Very sustainable. Um, we use only the natural harvesters who have been harvesting seaweed for years okay. who understand the foreshore, who understand the sustainability of the foreshore. Okay. And um, uh, by working with, with those cutters, then the, fo the foreshore will be respected and treated sustainably. Okay, so there's no, I suppose... Um... Over harvesting, no. Okay, okay, yeah. great. No, yeah, that, because... would be a, that would be an important point for CELAC, that we are very traceable and, and sustainable. Okay, because um, I think yeah, that's a really important point yes. for everyone now, and companies are definitely a lot more yeah. aware of it, so it's really good that you can yeah. go back and say and that. We, we have developed an app. Uh, it's the only one available that we can give to the harvesters that will locate their location where they cut. We can log it, and we can make sure that that area is not over harvested or not harvested again for another four or five years whatever wow. so, so we can we can make sure uh, to mitigate against over harvesting okay so everything is very closely <coughs> monitored yes. and it's everything is remained safe i suppose yeah. then uh, coming on to like we've heard the benefits of all the products we've heard that it's it's eco-friendly it's sustainable and there's no harm done to natural habitats yeah. why is this not bigger then i mean is this is this relatively unknown or is it just new I, I, years, years ago, seaweed was a big thing, but I think over the last 40 or 50 years, it just kind of got forgotten about okay. it. Okay. And now, because of the antibiotics, it was an awful lot easier to get an antibiotic than it was to get some seaweed and dry it and feed it to your animal. But okay. now, with antimicrobial resistance and the push against antibiotics, the, the wheel is turning. 
okay. and now natural products are making a comeback and, and they're working like they, they worked a hundred years ago they're going to work today again yeah mm -hmm. okay I suppose seaweed is something that will always be around you know we're, we live yeah. on an island and it. it's yeah well seaweed has been there before the, the animals like so it maybe yeah. makes a part of our DNA you know okay. that's maybe why the response is there because there's some kind of inner thing that recognises possibly the yeah but the, the animals do respond to it Okay, you well, know, I mean, it's... tells us, repeat customers tell us, once they use it, they see the benefits, they come again. Okay, and speaking of re repeat customers, how has business been? How long have you been around now? Just remind me. Uh, we started with the idea in 2016. Oh, wow, and okay. we didn't really uh, get the products out there. We're about maybe two years now, uh, just okay. growing products. Of course, I suppose research and development, it takes time. Yeah, well, uh, there was no low drying technique out there okay. uh, for the CV. We dry at a low temperature, so we had to develop all that ourselves. So that took us a number of years. Okay. Uh, but we have that developed now, so it's, it's onwards and upwards now, hopefully. Okay, great. And uh, it's day two of the ploughing. Um, how has it been going for you so far? Have you had much interest? <clears throat> yeah, lots of interest. Great. It's great to be in here in the organic village. Yeah. Uh, because everybody who comes in here is interested in the organic organic produce and we're lucky enough we can be organic or conventional okay um, so uh, no we're getting a lot of interest and people are, are it's obvious people have heard about seaweed because a lot of people stop and look and ask and take leaflets and you know, we're very happy with the response great that's brilliant well look Martin thanks for joining me and best of luck with everything thanks very much thanks very much. Thank